welcome to ratio combining um, before we start just a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video okay so in this video what we're going to be looking at is the situation where we need to combine two separate ratios into one in order to find the relationships between um, different elements so in this case when making a cake the ratio of flour to butter used is two to one the ratio of butter to sugar used is two to three what is the ratio of flour to sugar well in this case what i want to do is i want to take the three different items that we've got so we have flour and we have butter and we have sugar and we can combine that into a three-way ratio now the first thing we're told is that the ratio of flour to butter is two to one but then we're told the ratio of butter to sugar is two to three now these are separate ratios currently but what we want to do is we want to combine them so that they are a single ratio and the way to do that is we want to find the overlap wherever the overlap is we want to find a common multiple of those two numbers and so in this case a common multiple of one and two in this case it's actually quite a straightforward one it is a multiple of two and what we're going to do is we're going to say well in the first ratio what have i done in order to turn the one into two well i have doubled that first ratio and therefore the flower is going to become four in the second ratio what did i do to turn two into two well i actually didn't do anything it was just multiplied by one and therefore i will also do that with the three it will become four to two to three but the question said what is the ratio of flour to sugar and so now we can ignore the butter and we can say that the ratio of flour to butter is four to three in the next one a bag uh, in a bag there are orange strawberry and apple sweets the ratio of orange to strawberry is two to five the ratio of strawberry to apple is three to four what is the ratio of orange to strawberry to apple sweets and so again we want eventually to have orange to strawberry to apple and in the first question uh, first ratio we're told that orange to strawberry is two to five and in the second part we're told strawberry to apple is three to four so again all i want to do is i want to combine them together by looking at the overlap there is strawberry in both cases i need a common multiple of five and three the easiest way to find that common multiple times them together so five times three is 15. now at the top what did i do to the first ratio to turn it into a value of 15 for strawberry well that was multiplied by three and so i need to do the same with the two two times three is six on the second ratio what did i do to turn the three of strawberry into 15 well i multiplied by five and so I have to do that with apple as well it's going to be 20 and so the ratio of orange to strawberry to apple will be 6 to 15 to 20 next we're going to look at a slight variation on this uh, where we have um, the introduction of fractions as well into the uh, situation and um, we have a pack of cards contains cards with circles squares and triangles the ratio of circles to squares is 2 to 5 the ratio of squares to triangles is four to seven what fraction of the cards is squares well straight away we need to do the same uh, th same thing as we did in the previous questions we have our circles to squares to triangles circles to squares is two to five the ratio of squares to triangles is four to seven now if i want to find the combined ratio well i'm going to have to look at all of the bits that overlap so i have five and four um, five and four uh, if i want to get a common multiple 
Well, we'll multiply them together, we'll get 20. And so at the top, um, that is, um, how did I turn five into 20? I multiplied by four, so two times four is eight. And in the second ratio, um, how did I turn four into 20? I multiplied by five, and so that gives me 35. Now, the question was what fraction of the cards is squares? Well, in this case, what we need to know is how many parts are we actually sharing in in total? So eight plus 20 plus 35, and that's actually 63 pieces. How many of those are squares? Well, squares in our ratio is the middle value, and therefore the fraction of squares is 20 out of 63. In a shopping centre, the ratio of closed shops to restaurants is 5 to 2. The ratio of closed shops to homeware shops is 6 to 1. What fraction of the shopping centre is homeware shops? Well, again, we want to just set this up um, in terms of clothes shops to restaurants to homeware. And clothes shops to restaurants is 5 to 2. And clothes shops to homeware shops is six to one um, and so in this case we have got a little uh, little difference here we've got a gap going but we do still have the overlap and this is the key area the overlap is what's most important and so if we go to combine them five uh, five and six well we'll multiply those together we'll get 30. so in the first ratio what have i multiplied by well i've multiplied by six so this 2 will also need to be multiplied by 6 to give me 12. In the second ratio, I multiplied by 5, and so I need to do the same with the 1. 1 times 5 is 5. The question was about fraction, and so we need to know how many we have in total. So 30 plus 12 plus 5 in terms of pieces, that is 47 pieces. And the question was, what fraction is homeware? Well, homeware is the final part of our fraction, and that is 5. And so 5 out of 47 are homeware. In the next question, uh, we're told about um, a triangle. A triangle contains three angles, A, B, and C. And the ratio of angle A to angle B is 3 to 2. The ratio of angle B to C is 1 to 2. Find the size of the largest angle. And so in this case we have A to B to C. A to B is 3 to 2. B to C is 1 to 2. How will I combine those together? Well, there's my overlap. The common multiple of those two values would be 2. And so the first ratio, that is remaining exactly as it was, 3 to 2. But the second one, that one has been multiplied by 2. And so it's become 3 to 2 to 4. Now, um, that's given us a ratio, but it wants us to find the size of the largest angle. For us to do that, we need one extra piece of information. What do those angles actually add up to? Well, because it's a triangle, they must add up to 180. This has now become a question of ratio. So we have a bar to draw. One, two, three pieces for angle A, one, two pieces for angle B, and one, two, three, four pieces for angle C. How many pieces is it in total? Well, that is um, nine pieces in total. So if I want to know what each individual piece is worth, well that's going to be 180 divided by 9 and that is 20. So 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. And the question was what is the size of the largest angle? Well, obviously, C is going to be the largest angle, as it's got the most blocks. So angle C is 4 lots of 20. It's 80 degrees. 
In a school, every student studies one of French, German or Spanish. In a year group, the ratio of French students to German students is 7 to 9. The ratio of German students to Spanish students is 5 to 4. There are more than 200 students in the year group. What is the minimum number of French students? Well, straight away, we can see we've got two different, uh, two different ratios, so we do want to combine those together. Um, so we're going to begin with French to German to Spanish. And we were told that the ratio of French to German was 7 to 9, and the ratio of German to Spanish was 5 to 4. The overlap is in the middle at German, and that is with 9 and 5. So we're going to multiply those together. We've got 45 in the middle. So what did I do to the first ratio in order to make it 45 for German? Well, that was times by 5. So 7 times 5, 35. In the second ratio, what did I do to turn 5 into 45? I times by 9. And so that is 36. Now, the question was... Um, what is the minimum number of French students that would be needed in order for there to be two, uh, more than 200 students in total? Well, currently, if we just add together the amounts that we've got uh, for French, German and Spanish in our ratio, it's 35 plus 45, which is 80, um, plus 36, which is 116. So currently we have 116. Now, obviously, that means we have not got 200 students and so what we would need to do is we would need to keep building up this ratio until we have a total which is greater than 200 and the obvious way here would uh, is that we first of all have a look and see can we simplify the ratio we can't and so if we just double everything up so we have the same again 70 uh, students doing French, 90 doing German, and 72 doing Spanish. Well, that would take us to 232 students, double the number, and that is the minimum. So the question was the minimum number of French students that will be required. In this case, the minimum number of French students is 70. And finally, we come to the exam question, and this came from the Edexcel paper in November 2017, and it was foundation and higher paper three, so it is a calculator paper if required. Um, and in this case, uh, there are only blue pens, green pens, and red pens in a box. The ratio of the number of blue pens to the number of green pens is two to five. The ratio of the number of green pens to the number of red pens is four to one. There are less than 100 pens in the box. What is the greatest possible number of red pens in the box? Well, as again, we've got two separate ratio and therefore we want to combine them together. So we've got blue to green in the first ratio and green to red in the second. So two to five and four to one. If I want to combine them, I need to look at that overlap and decide how I'm going to make that the same. Well, I'm going to make it equal by making it 20, the common multiple. The first one has been multiplied by four. So two times four is eight. The second ratio has been multiplied by five. So one times five is five. And if we have a look at how many that means we have in total, um, that means that currently we'd be talking about 33 pens. But what it said is there are less than 100 pens in the box in total and we're looking for the greatest possible number. So what we want to do is we want to build these 33 pens up until we are at most 100 pens. And so if I did the same amount again, doubling everything up, well that would mean I had 66 pens. But can I go further? Well if I add the top and bottom together, I've got 24 to 60 to 15, and that will be 99 pens in total. And so that is the biggest we could possibly go. And the question was the greatest number of red pens. Well, that would be the 15. So the largest number of red pens we could have is 15.